Okay, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through um, painting the color wheel. And um, you are welcome to paint along with me and just pause as needed. Um, all right, so most students know kind of basic color theory that yellow, blue, and red are your primary colors. You mix them together to get the other colors like green and purple and orange. Um, however, with paint, it, um, in theory, it's easy. With paint, it can be more difficult because you're, um, first of all, we talked about brush control, trying to maintain our brush control to paint within our sections, okay? I am not going to have the best br brush control in this painting because I'm talking and demonstrating and trying to go for speed here, okay? Um, so we're trying to build brush control, and then we're also trying to um, learn about color mixing and paint and pigments and what happens when we mix two pigments together in different amounts and um, how to achieve the color we're trying to get quickly and efficiently. And that just takes practice, getting to know your paint, getting to know the pigment strength, what colors are easily overpowered, and what colors easily overpower other colors. So, um, first thing you can do is just paint in the primary colors, which I have labeled for you. Blue, red, and yellow. Um, I'm not going to paint my blue right now. Um, I'll come to that. So, I'm going to do this section right here. And this section between the yellow and red is going to be different mixtures of yellow and red. I'm only using those two colors. But um, this one that's closer to red is going to have more red, less yellow. This one is going to be um, kind of equal amounts, and this one's going to be more yellow and less red, okay? Um, the colors we're going to end up with is we want kind of our typical orange here, um, a red orange here, and more of a yellow orange here, okay? Um, again, in theory, it's easy to understand. In practice, it's a little bit more difficult. So. Rather than mixing a color and painting it on as I go, I'm going to mix these three colors up at once so I can better gauge um, if I'm doing them right and in the right spot, okay? So this one where I want red-orange, I'm going to have mostly red and some yellow. Now the thing about red and yellow is that yellow is much easily overpowered by red, so um, I only added a little bit of yellow, but I'm not really getting much difference there. So I'm going to add some more. And I want it to look distinctly different from my red, okay? Um, so I think that looks pretty good for my red-orange. Now I'm going to make a mixture of the two. I'm going to add a lot more yellow here. And I'm trying to get just a more typical orange. That's still looking a little bit red to me. It's looking very similar to that. Um, what you're finding out probably is that, or what we're finding out together, is that um, yellow is a much weaker pigment than this red, okay? All paints are different, all pigments are different, all brands are different, but for this particular set of paints that we have, the yellow is quite weak compared to the red. Okay, so there we have a pretty good looking orange. Okay, and now I want to create a um, yellow orange. Now, my brush is really loaded up with paint, and because I know that red so easily overpowers my yellow. Um, there is still red in my brush because I haven't washed it with water. Um, but the little amount of red that's in my brush with a big glob of yellow might be just the, what I need to create a yellow, kind of yellow orange. And my palette paper is not staying in place. Okay, so that didn't tint it enough. So I can, you know, kind of go to my orange pile and grab a little bit there. and maybe a bit more. Okay, then when I feel like I have my three colors planned out, I've got my yellow orange, my orange, and my red orange, then I can start putting it onto my color wheel. And the paint I have is pretty transparent, so um, it doesn't hurt to put in another layer so you get a more solid, even looking color, although it's pulling out some of the red that's in my brush. Okay, so I have a yellow orange. Now I'm going for my more orange orange. Yep, 
if your brush kind of gets globbed up with paint, because we used it for mixing, um, some artists, they always only ever mix their colors with a palette knife. They never mix with their brush. I do both. If I'm mixing small amounts of paint, I will mix it with my brush. But if your brush gets filled up with paint, make sure to um, squeeze it out. Okay, and then we've got our red orange, kind of combining these two piles that I have here. Okay, at this point, I'm done with yellow for now. I'm going to go to my reds, to my blues. So this is where I want to wash with water. At no point have I did I ever wash my brush out with water. Um, I feel like it's a waste of time, and it adds, most kids, they don't dry off their brush enough, so then they add water back into their paint, and they have, and like my paint's already kind of transparent. So then when you add water to it, it just gets even more transparent. So I only wash between drastic color changes, which we're changing from oranges now to purples, so that's pretty drastic. Okay, um, same thing. I'm going to take my blue. And I like to paint a couple layers on get it a little more opaque. All right, now I'm going to mix up my three piles. So I want a blue violet. And I want my more typical violet. Now I feel like the tinting strength of this blue and this red are a little bit more equal. And then I want my red violet. Okay, so I want my red violet to look distinctly different from my red. Um, I think it could use a touch more blue. really dark on the video. It's not actually that dark in person. Now, I know that's looking super dark in this video, but um, you get the idea. Okay, and now I'm going to switch over and I'm going to do this last section, blue to yellow, which is my greens. So I'm going to wash my brush really good. quite a bit of purple coming out at the base of my brush. All right, now I'm ready to do greens. So you can probably guess yellow is going to be a little more easily overpowered than the blue. Okay, so my yellow green, I want to look kind of like a tennis ball. Then I want a green green, kind of like grass. Okay, and then I want a blue green.
looking more for a teal or a turquoise. And different pigments make um, different combinations of blues and greens. You can see this green is kind of not super vibrant. It's just the combination of blue and yellow that I'm using. Um, so anytime you paint, you need to kind of get to know your pigments and what combinations create the right results. Um, but this is just kind of to know the basics of how to get different colors. Um, This blue that I'm using is called Ultramarine um, to get a better. So now the only disadvantage to mixing your colors ahead of time is that they may dry out. Acrylic dries very fast. Um, so I've got to remix it. But what was I saying? Oh, the blue I'm using is called Ultramarine. It's kind of a cooler blue, so it's good for mixing your purples. Um, but... That's why my greens aren't super vibrant. Um, other pigments that are better for mixing greens would be like phthalo blue. Um, but every paint company has different names for its paint and different pigments. and um, So that's where it can get kind of confusing. But if you're aware of the concept that, you know, if you're not getting the color you want, it could be you're not the problem. It could be the type of paint you have is the problem. Um, then if you can experiment and try a different blue or a different red um, and get what you want, then that's good for you to know. Okay, there is part one of the color wheel. I'm going to make a different video that talks to you about painting the inside section.